for Parliament, and he knows that I won't intentionally abandon my duties if I had no just reasons. And that is the Dom Kwabenya MP, Sarah Josafu, sounding confident just a couple of months back when she spoke to us here at Joy News that the president knows her worth and contribution to the party and appreciates why she had been gone for so long. Well, as it turns out last night, the president finally ran out of patience and sacked her as Gender, Children and Social Protection Minister. Now, listen to her in that interview, sounding confident that she will walk back, right back, from wherever she's been into this job. You're talking about the fact that the president is well aware of your condition. Is that possibly why he's keeping you at post as gender minister? Some have argued that by now you should have lost your job. That is their opinion. The prerogative lies in the president, and he knows exactly what I am capable of doing, what I've done for the party, what I've done for parliament, and he knows that I won't intentionally abandon my duties if I had no just reasons. And he won't allow me to stay for the family if he didn't know exactly what was happening. And we know that definitely, as you're indicating to us, you will return. But then the question about resuming your role as gender minister. We know there's a caretaker minister as we speak uh, acting in your stead. Will you take up the post immediately you return? Or perhaps you are considering resigning from post? <laughs> that is what you're expecting or that's what other people are expecting um well it's all about you in the end because you say the president is well aware so what will you do exactly. will, you, will you take up the post once you return and since i haven't resigned it's implied that exactly what you're saying is the truth when i touch down i am going to do what i have to do as a minister since i haven't been relieved of my post yet well, she has now been relieved of her post, and obviously she's not going to take up that position. We've not heard from her since. But all along she maintained that if there's one person who understood the reason why she's been away for so long, I remember the president had given her a long leash, including several renewal of her leave of absence. She maintains in this interview that the president knew all along the real reason, and she was clear in her mind that the president understood the reasons and agreed with her that she had to be away. She explained exactly why she's been away in that interview. I will be returning definitely to serve my people. I lead and serve the people of Domi Kwabinya. And I've done that for the past 12 years, and I know exactly what my responsibilities are. And I'm definitely going to do that. But as you know, my son is unwell and he has to transition to school. And as a mother, I have to ensure that all that is settled before I can resume my duties. And that's exactly what I'm doing. With God, everything is possible. We've been praying, I've been doing a lot to support my, my children, which I'm required to do by law. And um, as you know, they're in a foreign land and I have to comply with whatever I'm directed to. And until all that is sorted out, um, I have to do what I have to do and then I'll return to my duty. Here's the opportunity for us to know your side of the story. We've heard from your party, we've heard from your colleagues in parliament as well. What's the Ajwa Safo story? <laughs> the Ajwa Safo story is exactly what I've told you about. And that's what um, communication I have sent to His Excellency the President, and he's very much aware of what is happening to me and my family. And um, that's what I expect every Ghanaian to understand, that I am not intentionally abandoning my duties and my responsibilities. I have served the people of Ghana for 12 years. I entered politics when I was young. And I have done it. And there has not been any past record of me absenting myself like this. That should tell people that there's really something that ought to be done with family. And I know that you will put family first. I haven't given up on my party. I am still very loyal and committed to the party and to His Excellency the President. So... Is she still committed to the president? We don't know that yet now because uh, she's being sacked now yesterday and that uh, 
pretty shortly with a statement issued by the presidency. Uh, she's gone now uh, as a minister. There isn't a substantive replacement just yet. Uh, and there is tonight a push now uh, on the presidency to appoint a substantive minister immediately because the, the sanitation minister will be acting and she has been acting for a while in that position as uh, gender, children and social protection minister. The international non-governmental organization Send Ghana uh, has today been uh, demanding that a substantive minister is appointed, particularly because of where the country is right now with the economic challenges, uh, with social protection policies at risk of, of suffering. Uh, listen to the head of Sen Ghana, uh, Siafa Kamara, speaking to my colleague, Asha Brian. For us, it has been long overdue. The social protection uh, program that Sen over the last 15 years or more has been engaged with to be left without the minister at this very critical period when social protection programs are experiencing flash down in government support, delay in cash transfer, um, we think it has been long overdue. Now that the president has taken the right decision to relieve her of her post, we hope that steps will be taken immediately to have a substantive minister because social protection needs a powerful voice in cabinet. It needs a powerful voice at all levels of society at this time. And the minister uh, is the best person to do that in government. The absence of a substantive minister is worrying at this particular point in time, given the challenges that we see in social protection. Given that a substantive minister is appointed today, what should be the focus of that minister, considering the neglect of the ministry for the past almost two years? I think that the, uh, the first thing I would like to see a substantive minister do is to connect with the stakeholder in the sector so that we can together review uh, the serious challenges that the sector is facing, especially as Ghana is preparing to engage in discussion with IMF. And we know that uh, IMF programs are usually characterized by uh, reduction in government support for social protection activities. So the first thing the minister should be doing is uh, energizing the, the, uh, the stakeholders, connecting with all of us who are there, and making sure that uh, they get our input into how we can pressure the government and the World Bank to ensure that social protection uh, programs are not, do not suffer slash in government support. Rather, at the time when the country is facing serious problems, the poor who are the weakest in society, that this is the time that we should be pressurizing government in the IMF to ensure that they are protected. M Mr. That's Kamara, what the minister should focus on. Mr. Kamara, you've been doing a lot of work on the gender ministry. Now, um, what are the pressing issues that were not dealt with uh, because of the absence of a minister? Well, I think that the gender ministry in many ways has suffered a lot because of the quality of the leadership, even when the minister was there. So we hope that the new minister will be appointed and will understand the issues and be passionate about social protection issues, about issues of inequality. The issues that have so far I know, we've issued release after release, calling on government to read the right, to make sure that people in sleep, for example, that they, 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 they get whatever little money is getting to them to get it on time. That is one issue that has so far. Social protection programs are experiencing slash down those are the issues in the sector. That is why I said that uh, the minister to be the substantive minister, if the person is appointed, they should connect with the network of civil society actors who are involved in the sector to hear their views as to how we can ensure that social protection programs are protected, they are invested in, 
even during this hard time. Government should prioritize that. I had the, uh, the uh, head of uh, Sen Ghana, uh, of course, asking for an immediate replacement, a substantive one uh, for uh, the minister. Well, today, uh, just a, dig a day, a few hours, really, after the president sacked the gender minister, uh, Sarah Joseph, who has been absent uh, without, as I, from, from parliament without permission for so long. Um, sacked her, uh, appointed somebody to act in her stead for a while. D hours after that, the president stormed the Dom Kabenya constituency. Is that a coincidence or was the sacking plan to coincide with the president's visit? Considering that the majority side, the MPP side in parliament, are pushing so strongly for her to also uh, be sacked as a member of parliament, for her to vacate her seat. If they have their way, that seat becomes vacant. And then you would have a by-election. So is this the beginning of the uh, charm offensive by the government to woo the constituents ahead of that likely outcome? We'll do some analysis of this pretty shortly. But my colleague, Samuel Mbura, was with the president in the constituency and is joining me in the studio with more on this. Samuel, um, the president was there to cut sword for a particular road. What road was this? Well, this road is the Dom Kitasi 23 kilometer stretch of road. He was doing this, and the cloud and the questions, and everybody else was there in their heads was a situation with Sarah Joseph, who happens to be the MP. You've been interacting with the constituents whilst the president was there. What have they been saying about the decision to sack it? Well, some of these residents believe that the reason given by their MP for her absence, especially to take care of her family, is justified. They are also arguing that um, we have MPs in Parliament who have not travelled, yet they are not working as expected. However, they agree with the President firing her from office as Minister because the President appointed her and can decide to sack her at any time. Okay. My name is Omoman Intanazi. I've been here for years. 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 Now, what you said, President, so are you not free office as Minister for Gender and Social Protection? Me back to you, I'm at it. It's also why do you need chess? My dream, I need the President, you know, how you want to know. Ah, one person here, you want to know. And then, ma, we need to know. Ni, baby, ah, oh. So, oh, baby, ah. Oh, then, we need to know. We need to know. No, no, so, you need to know. You want to know. We need to know. You want to know. You know, the decision we're taking, oh, you're good. Because, you know, the man, so, you know, one year. All right, so... Um, he agrees with the president's decision to take her off as a minister for gender and social protection. Say, be in every word here. Me, me, my dream here. I'm just saying, you because we are transferred 12 years, I for 16 years. So, we be my uncle, why that? Or we be my uncle, why? In the two years more, I can only just say, yes, son, only part of the problem. Or I solve your problem, my own domain constituency. What he's saying is that there are some MPs that are already there. They have not traveled. Yes, they have not done anything for their constituents. So they don't see their case as exceptional. Let me also find out from you. Um, oh, I'm pretty dear, you know. So the views there, it, 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 it appears a bit mixed uh, when you listen to all of them. Um, the assembly members were also there. I mean, remember that Sarah Joseph is a member of that assembly, Don Kwabanya um, assembly. They've also been interacting with you on this. So the Dom Kobia constituency falls under the Ga East Municipal Assembly. And these assembly members, though are worried about the, uh, she being ousted from office as minister, they believe the president has that right to hire and fire at any time. But on her role as MP, some think that her seat should be declared vacant. Well, it's a worrisome situation to me, but you know, the president has the power to appoint and then also to disappoint. So uh, that is left with the uh, president to take a decision. In fact, uh, we are all not happy of what I mean, what happened. But all the same, so far as it's an, a decision from this, I mean, from, I mean, from the college MPs, we we've, we've taken it like that. So do you agree with the president's um, decision to sack her? In fact, in this one, I will not say she, she, she's been sacked. But I think uh, due to some inconveniences of something, that's why maybe he's not uh, being, I mean, coming to be, I mean, in, in parliament anymore. I don't actually understand why it has come like that. Because Ajua, of whom we know, is not a person like, it's not like that. But I'm, I'm surprised things have 
turn to this way. But the decision lies on the parliamentarians. It's so part. It's also part. At least he's the one supposed to lobby for us. And for some time now, he's not in the country. We see we assembly members who work through the uh, the MP. So normally some of our issues we table to her and then she also done for us. So for some time that he's not being with the constituency, it's given a lot of problem for us. Are you worried she has been sacked as a minister? I'm not worried. She's my sister. Uh, and then I see that if there's any issue that they can try stop, they're going to try stop. At least you come by and then do some job for us. Interesting views there from the uh, members of the Assembly, uh, and she's a member of that Assembly as well as by virtue of her position as a member of Parliament. And remember that earlier this week we checked with the, with, with the with her aides and they told us she's actually in the country. Um, question is, has she met already with the President or has she not? And will she be in Parliament? Uh, how long will she be here for? And will she be here when Parliament resumes in October? We don't know. Uh, Samuel, the President today tried to steer clear of all that controversy uh, surrounding Sarah Joseph, where a woman she sat the then a few hours uh, the evening of the night before, uh, he's been keeping to the script when it comes to the road network that uh, she was cutting. He was cutting the sword for exactly. He never mentioned. Sarah Joasafo in his speech, he was only touting his achievements in office uh, so far as the construction of road network is concerned. For a road which serves as a vital link between the greater Accra and eastern regions and whose construction has been the subject of promises made by various political parties and successive governments over the years, I am happy that it is under the presidency of Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado that the rehabilitation of the Domitri Kitasi Road is finally being undertaken. The 23 kilometer stretch of road connects the Accra to Kumasi Road to the Accra Eburi Kufuridia Road and provides an alternative route to road users between Accra and debris. The road also provides access to Asensi University, one of our nation's foremost and most prestigious universities. The rehabilitation of the Domekitasi Road is being funded by the government of Ghana and the Kuwaiti Fund. We enjoy excellent relations with the state of Kuwait we're determined to widen and deepen those relations. The works, estimated at 35 million United States dollars, and scheduled to be completed within 24 months from today, are being undertaken by Monsieur's First Sky Construction Limited, one of the best road construction com companies in the country. Let's, let's delve deeper a bit more into uh, all that has happened in the last uh, 24 hours. I want to bring in uh, post and election watcher Ben Singh joins us on the telephone line right now. Uh, Mr. FC, I'm grateful for your time. Your top story. Good evening, Ivan, and good evening, good evening to our listeners. We'll also be speaking to the constituency uh, secretary of the MPP in uh, uh, Dom Kwabenya, who also joined us uh, on the telephone line right now. But let me start with you, Ms. Efsit. Um, do you find this coincidence? The night before the president, you know, approves she sacked, uh, the morning the president is in that same constituency cutting the sword for a very important road. Is it just a, a coincidence or we should read a bit more into this, considering that the majority side in Parliament are pushing for her to vacate a seat which will create a room for a by-election? Very much. Thank you. First, I think I, I better give a, uh, our listeners a bit of background as to how safe Tomi Kabinia is for the MPP. In the 2016 parliamentary elections, the MPP won had 63,488 votes, NDC 29,392 votes, a difference of 34,096 in favor of the NPP. In 2020, MPP had 75,041 votes, NDC had 52,262, the margin 22,779 votes. It tells you straight away it's a relatively safe seat for um, the MPP. 
I think that I've been well informed from my sources in Parliament that if the Speaker in October decides to go against the committee's reports that the seat be declared vacant, I think uh, somebody will head to the court to test it. Now, if the seat is declared vacant, but the majority of them, they went out to 2020 elections, won the uh, party's primaries by eight, single eight votes. So if there's a by-election, I believe that Madam Safo has two options, to contest the primaries again, or decide to call the bluff of the NPP and go as independent candidate, like the Formula then MP did. So that is what I think the options are available to him. But given that I just read a report, an interview with the constituency executive of Dominic Albania online, if Madam Safo goes to the primaries, I think he will lose. And if he goes to contest as an independent, I don't think he can pull off what the Formula MP did. Evans. That is a very interesting point there. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, what about the factor of where the economy is right now? Many will say uh, any by-election now, regardless of how strong the hold is in Dom Kwabanya, will be a, a referendum on the administration in the second term. And where we are right now economically, the, the, the challenges, it will be pretty dangerous for the MPP to, to feel certain that they can pull this off. 22,000 votes margin, even I doubt it. I mean, if it was four, 5,000. And you need to bear in mind, um, 2016, the margin was 34,096. Um, 2020, the margin was 22,717. That's, it, the margin reduced by about 12,000. And this by election, I'm sure the two parties will ship their members to get out and vote. Uh, the margin is too huge. You know, and I'm sure both parties, NDC, uh, would want to really close the margin, even if they lose, close the margin to maybe 10,000 or in terms of percentage wise, close the margin. And the MPP will want to maintain the margin or increase it. Or maybe, I mean, I just suppose absence in New York to the benefit of the NDC. Maybe the NDC may decide not to vote their candidate and vote for her as an independent parliamentary candidate. Once they do that, they are killing their own party. They are killing the NDC party in Dominic Cabinia. So I just can call the bluff, decide to go independent by advance. The margin of 22,000 is huge. Uh, Mr. Epson, I'm grateful that you join us with your thoughts. I, I wonder what the constituency uh, MPP executives are making of all this. I mean, the first trigger has now been fired. The president did that. And that tells you uh, that uh, the, the, the president has had enough of this. If the president has had enough of this, it will rub off on what may happen in parliament as well. Uh, Theophilus Ansa is the MPP secretary in Dom Cabinet. He's also on the line with me. Uh, Mr. Ansa, I'm grateful for your time here on Top Story. Thank you very much I mean, for having me. So he, she's being sacked now by the president. The president was there today. I'm pretty sure you were there when he, he cut the sword for the road. Yes, and, I was. Uh, but this is all happening. Good day for you, I'm sure. Uh, now that the road is going to start. But this is all happening under this cloud of Ajoa Safo hanging all over the constituency. Um, obviously, the president has had enough. This may rub off on what is happening in parliament. It's very, very possible. It's a likely outcome. That that seat may be declared vacant, and you might go to by election. You are confident that this may come back to haunt you? Basically, I've said this all over and over and over again. Basically, and we we don't see the way you see out there. Politics is a continuous process, and I've said it that with or without the mem member of parliament, Tommy Kwabena must move on. The developmental projects we need, we should get it. And we know where to go to get it. So I heard you say that uh, whether it was coincident having this sort cutting and sacking at the same time, you no, know, it has been planned long ago. And this issue of Adra has been lingering on over six months now. 
So whether a draw is coming or not, our political plans in terms of projects must go on. And that's what we did today. That road has been awarded on contract long ago. The president has secured the funds for it, and the contractor has to start. And we've done the short cutting. If it comes to Adjoso for honorable winning or going for independent or the seat in declared vacant, vacant, what we are saying is we are workers of the party, we are staff of the party, and every political party seeks to maintain power. And that is exactly what we are looking forward to. And we have worked so hard that we had over over 22,000 uh, margin for the past election, and we're not going to let it go. We have hung on this seat for over five times. This is our fifth term on the seat. So I don't think it's going to be any different if the seat is declared vacant. We're going to work hard and maintain it and probably increase the vote margin. I like that confidence. Um, and uh, I asked that question earlier of uh, Ben FC. Are you factoring in where the economy is, where people's socioeconomic circumstances are currently, which is a pretty difficult time for many? And that will, you know how when people feel it in your pocket, they tend to reflect that in how they cast your ballots. I guess you know what has caused this economic downturn. And it is a matter of explaining to the people. We're not just going to have an election without speaking to the people. We have to educate them and let them know what the circumstances are. And it's a global <coughs> downtrend. And every nation is suffering as a result of COVID that we were recovering from. The president and the government was doing well from 2017 to 2019 before the COVID set in. And we are doing well, basically. Um, other European countries which are developed are also crying so it's not different from what they are seeing elsewhere. Let the people understand what the situation is and let them see what, despite of all the troubles and the difficulties we are going through, what we have been able to achieve as a government in the constituency and what we are prepared to do going forward. I think they will understand that. We have our people in the constituency. We have our people in the constituency who are not too much happy because they need it and they have certain expectations that have not been met. But when we sit them down and explain to them why this expectation has not been met and give them the assurances that moving forward, breaking the eight or securing the seat in Domingo Avenue will yield better food for all of us. It is better to be in power and expectant than to be in opposition because if you go to opposition, you have no expectations at all. And these are the messages we're going down to the people and we'll get them to appreciate the practical and tangible projects we have started, those that we have completed, and I think it will yield the result we are all looking for. I'm grateful, sir. Uh, Theophilus Ansai is the MPP secretary in the Dom Kwabeya constituency.